Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Right, let's get on with the show. Mobile cameras are being worn by school lollipop men and women and in Bedford to deter those who swear at staff and speed past patrols. We've talked about this before, um, uh, uh, the abuse that lollipop men and women get. I, why would you abuse a lollipop man or a woman? Why, why would you do that? At, at the very, very worst... There are slight inconvenience in the same way that traffic lights and pelican crossings are a slight inconvenience. But you, you'd have to be really cold to think of them as an inconvenience because, you know, they're helping kids cross the road safely. That's the very, very worst you could say about So why would someone speed past them, flicking them the Vs and shouting abuse? Incredible. Video footage of people ignoring patrols or being abusive could be passed to the police following an increase in these problems in the borough. The council's decision to introduce the cameras is winning support from local residents. We heard from them earlier on in the show. And later on, we'll speak to Bedford Borough Ca- uh, Council. But we can hear now from Jack Hart, who's from the Freedom Association, which is an impartial libertarian pressure group dedicated to fighting for individual liberty and and freedom of expression. Morning, Jack. Good morning. Cameras on uh, crossing staff. What do you reckon? Good idea? Um, I don't really. I think this is just yet another example where CCTV is viewed as a sort of perceived quick fix. I think if you just stick up some cameras, the problem will go away. But if people are being abusive to um, uh, uh, lollipop men and women, then th- we need some way of, of recording that. It's n- you can't just write on the black line with a piece of chalk anymore. We need something, don't we, to catch these thugs? Well, I think we do, but when you bear in mind these, these cameras are going to cost in the realm of about £1,000 each, you're looking at the potential. You could actually have other people there to, to witness what was going on. Just using a camera isn't mm. going to make the problem gonna go away. What, what suggestions would you, would you use, then, Jack? You mentioned other people there and, and, and maybe getting a, you know, mums or dads to be a witness. Is there anything else that could be done? We, you know, we have PCSOs that would be ideal for sort of witnessing this sort of thing and ensuring it doesn't happen. Plus, if someone saw a PCSO, they'd be far less likely to commit such a sort of offence. But if a, if a, if you're saying that, then we need to have a PCSO at every um, um, at crossing with a lollipop man or woman. We might as well just get rid of the lollipop people and have the PCSO doing the crossing. Well, I think the, the, the main problem I have, really, is the use of CCTV will just be the thin end of the wedge. You know, how long until local councils start using them to record parking offences and all other sorts of things? Because mm. they're being controlled by a local council. That's my main problem. If it was being controlled by the police or someone with the authority to actually deal with the offender, they'd be far more effective than just the local council filming uh, their citizens. Well, I was going to say, it, it, it is a local council thing, and it would be the local council that gets to view the footage. You're worried that it might be used for more than just... Naughty drivers who, who, who are flicking the V's at a lollipop man. For sure. You know, there are so many examples of where local councils become overzealous and start using stuff for things it was never designed for. We've had examples of using anti-terror legislation for people living in the wrong catchment area. So with these cameras, it will not be too long until you receive a letter in the post a couple of weeks later telling you parked in the wrong place near a school. You know, this is exactly what will happen with CCTV. CCTV is, is getting bigger and bigger in terms of personal CCTV. I um, uh, uh, often see cyclists and motorcyclists with uh, cameras strapped to their head, uh, and we're being encouraged to uh, put, install cameras in the front and the back of our cars in case there's an accident. Does that worry you, Jack? It does to an extent. I think this idea of the surveillance state is just becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're now constantly filmed throughout the day. If you walk, I, see, I live in central London. If I walk around, I'm filmed millions of times a day, most of the time without my consent. I don't really think that's on. Why not? Because people are, 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 are protecting themselves. You're not suggesting that the, the, the drivers that have uh, a camera in their car or the cyclists with cameras on their head, they're not going to exploit that footage, are they? They're doing that to protect themselves and make it easier to make a claim if there is an accident. Well, there is that, but you also have examples where it is used for other reasons. You know, I think in, in London recently, there was a big, uh, famous blog where people were taking photographs sort of uh, hidden on the tube and putting them up online, and people do do the same with this video footage they've taken in their cars. I think it really is the thin end of the wedge when we're sort of, you know, under the impression that the best thing to do is to film someone else the entire time. It sort of removes any privacy we have. It does remove privacy, and I, I, and I can um, kind of get my head around why people would object to that, but it... it, it... We we need to do something, and and just relying on people to be decent, th- uh, you know, people that will help out. It doesn't always work. 
It doesn't, but then again, I think when you go back to these cameras on the on the lollipops, they're, they're going to cost a thousand pounds each, nearly. Mm. You know, that money could be spent in far better ways, improving the road area so it was harder for drivers to drive in a manner that was aggressive. You know, doing stuff like that will actually have a real benefit rather than just filming the offender. Jack, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. Let's throw that out there to you, dear listener. That's Jack Hart from the Freedom Association. He doesn't think it's a good idea for lollipop men and women to um, have cameras on them. The ground is quite expensive. Why is it costing us? Th- I, don't, I mean, I, we, we've not looked into the uh, costs. No doubt we'll find out later on. Or maybe not. Uh, a £1,000 seems quite expensive when you could buy a cheap camera for, uh, what, 100 quid? Probably even less than that these days and just whack it on the stick, whack it on the end of your stick. Vic, 08459 four double five five double five is the telephone number uh, if you want to give us a call about that.